It is the people of the Philippines who are the true heroes of the day. Our correspondent Brian Barron, who's been in Manila charting the rise of the force they call People's Power, reports now on the day it triumphed. As revolutions go, this had its fair share of bullets. A climax in the night outside the gates of Mr. Marcus's sanctuary, Malacanang. The name itself symbolizing one of the cruelest, most corrupt regimes of modern Asia. Tonight, the citadel fell. His opponents scrambled over the gates. Were the bullets aimed at people or into the air? No one knew. Well, this is it. It's just been confirmed that Mr. Marcos has indeed left and there's absolute chaos outside his palace with heavy shooting machine gun fire and people panicking all over the place. As rival groups clashed outside, Mr. Marcos and his family had fled by helicopters under American guarantees. One of his generals gave me the first official confirmation. The situation is well under control. You can see that there is extreme jubilation and happiness on the part of the people. Has uh, President Marcos left Well, I don't palace? know. Uh, he's no longer there. He's left the palace? Yes, that's correct. Has he left the country? I don't know, but he's no longer there. So Mrs. Aquino is now the ruler of this country? Yes. It was just 12 hours since Mrs. Aquino had herself sworn in as president. She made it by election support and the belated backing of mutinous army generals. I, Corazon Coanco Aquino, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously fulfill my duties as president of the Philippines. As president of the Philippines. After kisses for her family, the 53-year-old widow paid off her immediate political dues. Running mate Doy Lorel becomes Prime Minister. Renegade Defence Minister Juan Enrile gets the same job under Mrs Aquino, and the army wasn't forgotten. I hereby promote Lieutenant General Fidel V. Ramos to full general. And I <laughs> Apart from Mrs Aquino herself, General Ramos is the hero of the revolution. His defection fatally split Mr. Marcus's armed forces. Mrs. Aquino's rise to power dates from the murder of her politician husband. In her eyes, the ousted president was the number one suspect. Today, while she was proclaimed president, Mr. Marcos too was trying to hold on. He organized his own presidential inauguration at Malacanang, but by then, many of his stalwarts were afraid to turn up. These were the last rites for the Marcos dictatorship. His wife, Imelda, sang, Just For You. But Mr. Marcus's attempt to have his inauguration televised live to the nation came unstuck. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've been waiting for, the administration of the oath of office of His Excellency President Ferdinand E. Marcos. Moments later, that broadcast was cut off. Uh, we have had some technical problems, so... What really happened was this, a savage street fight for control of the television channel. The rebels and Mrs. Aquino already controlled the main network. This commercial station was the only prize left. So there's instant panic here. At least three supporters of Marcus's forces are believed to have been killed trying to defend this broadcasting center. An unknown number are still holed up around, and there's a beginning of what's called a firefight. Marcos troops staked out on the television mast had little chance against overwhelming rebel firepower. We would like to request all the people to get off the firing range, please. What helped tip the balance was a rebel helicopter which pinpointed the Marcos troops location. Suddenly it was all over. 
and people power in the shape of Mrs. Aquino supporters had won yet another battle. Tonight, the aftermath, the sad task of recovering the bodies after a clash which pitted the army against itself. So the Marcos era ended with needless deaths, a sick old man surrounded by sycophants. A decisive blow to his tottering fortunes was the arrival here today of elite rebel troops from Cebu Island. They took over Manila Airport and Mr. Marcos's regime finally relinquished control. Tonight, as Mr. Marcos steals himself for a life in exile, people power has taken over his beloved Malacanang. They poured through the gates without resistance into a palace which they regard as the equivalent of Hitler's bunker. Within minutes, Aquino supporters began throwing state papers from the palace's windows. Others destroyed official portraits of the ousted family, and that brought intervention from a palace retainer. So let us show our love to the new president by not touching the palace. Do not steal anything from the palace. There is understandable jubilation tonight. Mr. Marcus has gone, good riddance, say the majority. And the country he exploited for so long has staggered away from the very brink of civil war. This is Brian Barron for the 6 o'clock news inside the presidential palace, Manila.